Now, if I said to you the word MIDI controller, what would you think of? Exactly, keyboards, maybe with some faders, a couple of buttons. So what the hell is this? This is the Composer by Digit Music. Now, although it looks cross between something that's come from an arcade machine and maybe something that belongs on the bridge of Star Trek, it's actually a MIDI controller. As you can see, it's on right now. It's Bluetooth, it's battery powered, and it has a joystick where you can control things in different directions, as well as eight soft buttons that have been programmed up to do specific things, but you can change that. Now, when you get the controller, you actually get it with a little box to hold it sturdy, but you can also get it supplied with a clamp. And today I'm going to show you around this thing and also why you should get one. So here we are at the desk. Now the composer is made up of this controller and we've got these eight buttons. There's a connection underneath where you can actually charge it and there's a single button here which turns it on and also connects it to Bluetooth. Regarding the Bluetooth on this thing, it's not connecting it to audio Bluetooth, it connects it to MIDI Bluetooth. So you don't go into the settings of your device and look for Bluetooth, you go into the program where there's gonna be something like GarageBand or Logic or whatever you're using and connect the Bluetooth there. Now when you turn this on, this light goes green and then when you connect it by Bluetooth, it goes blue, hence why it's blue. So I've got it connected up to my iPad, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into GarageBand I'm gonna create a brand new track. So for simplicity, we're gonna use the piano and then we go into the gear icon here and go into advanced. Now you can see Bluetooth MIDI devices and we're gonna click on there. Now you can see it's already connected, but if it's not, what you do is you hold the button down here until it beeps at you and you'll see this flash blue and then you can connect it straight away. Now the way this is set up by default, if you've got these two blue lights here and two yellow lights here, is the controller is set up for single note play. So we'll start on C3. Now I'm holding this right now, but you may have this clamped somewhere. So you can do this with either hand. And there is a way you can change the settings of this. If you're not comfortable with the buttons on the bottom, you can have it this way around. That way your hand's not in the way of the buttons and you can change the way at the top. At the moment, I've got it the way you'd have it out of the box. Now these buttons do different things. Starting with the yellow ones, these actually just change the octaves. And it goes down to C1 at its lowest point. Next, I want to show you how you play sustain and chords. And they have a thing called smart sustain, so that's this button right here. So you can make your own chords, of course, by holding the sustain down and... It's pretty clever. This button next to it is chords. So we can play chords just by doing that. Now, this is actually set to a major scale at the moment, and you can change it to be major or minor, and you can have different variants as well. Now, when you combine these two together, it has a very clever way of changing the sustain so you don't get the discorded sound. If you're on a single note, it will just ring out. But when you have the chord switched on, the smart sustain, as they call it, will actually ring out. But then when you play a new chord, it will turn it off for the first one. Now these two buttons, you can switch them on, but they only come alive and do something when you've got chords switched on. The first one here actually adds sevenths, ninths, and elevenths. So, that's your major chord. Seventh. Ninth. And a kind of eleventh, sort of. So it adds a bottom note as opposed to right at the top. This one here actually changes the way you play the chord. So instead of going C, E, G, you may go E, G, C. So you change where your fingering is on the keyboard. And you can see that the actual controller is velocity sensitive depending on how hard you press it. Now I'm just playing a piano right now. If I got out of here and changed this over to something like drums. Now with the drums, for example, they're actually programmed up to be lower down on the keyboard for if you're playing them on keyboard. So I need to go down a couple and 
And you could actually use this to play drums if you wanted to play drums in a really different way. So you could obviously go. Now I've left the blue pads for the end because they're actually mappable CC pads. You can in the software actually change all of these and we can change the pads to whatever you want them to be. But these two, the blue ones, we can actually have them as change something, maybe change a program, so because it's a CC number, or turn on effects, again, sending a CC command. Now that's everything to get you going, but actually we can go way deeper than this. The pads themselves can change. So this is page one, as it were, and you've actually got multiple pages for the pads to do things. Digit Music themselves actually have an entire video on how to change the pads and what every single pad does. So if you're interested in that, I would actually recommend go and watch it. There's no point me repeating all of that when they've already got the video there. I'll put a link to the Composer pad configuration video just up here right now. But the other side of this is it is a MIDI controller and I can clip it to anything, including a mic stand. So I'm gonna use this in a slightly different way. Now, if you're making music with something like this and you wanna get that music out there in the world, you need to look at today's sponsor, which is DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution company. You give your songs to them and they push it out to all the online stores, digital streaming sites around the world. Places like Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, Tidal, Pandora, Deezer, iHeartRadio, and loads more. But they also push it out to social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok. So what you can do is you can use your music in reels and you get paid for it. Now with most music distributors, they charge you per release, which means if you release something, they'll charge you no matter what it is, whether it's an EP, an album, a single, and they charge you every single time. DistroKid have a different stance on this and they charge you one price per year, which starts at $22.99. That's for their base tier, which is the musicians tier. You've got the musicians plus tier, which is what I'm on, which is $39.99 a year. With that comes a couple of perks, things like scheduling the date of the release, scheduling the pre-order date, and being able to upload lyrics to things like Apple Music and Google. Now you can do all of this on distrokid.com and we have a special link that will get you 7% off the first annual membership with DistroKid. So that $22.99 has just dropped down by 7% and so is the Musicians Plus and even if you go for the label tier that will give you 7% off that as well. So either scan the QR code, we have a link that's on the screen, it's also in the description box below to get you that 7% off and to get you signed up. Once you're in, you've got access to loads of different marketing tools. It's not just releasing your music, every time you release something you get a hyper follow page Page. There's promo cards and now you can even upload and get all those tools on DistroKid's mobile app So click the link or scan the QR code and start distributing your music today. Thank you very much to DistroKid for sponsoring this video So right. first of all, thank you very much for um, taking this call like a YouTube channel you get kind of like thrown a product and uh, They kind of go cool use it and then it's actually really just an extra gem to kind of speak to the people who create it and um, use it and stuff so uh, and I've thought of it and things like that so it's probably the most unique thing that's ever been sent to me ever. right okay, um, okay. And, that's, a, uh, that's a good uh, or a bad thing that, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's more it's more a, it, it's, it's certainly a good thing but it's also right. more of a I was like I, I first I first picked out the, the case and I was like I don't get it <laughs> and I was, I was de just be dead honest with you. I was like, I don't get I know it. this is good. Yeah. And, it took, and it took me a minute to kind of realize, obviously, sort of like where you were going with it. It's sort of overarching view of the business at Digit Music. Uh, essentially, everything we do falls under the banner of music made easier. So the idea is that we're kind of lowering the barrier for anybody to be able to start making music, um, playing an instrument as composer, but really just being able to kind of perform and put things together. So we've got three parts of the business. We've got a label, which creates um, audio samples that producers can use. And yeah. um, we sell through Splice and all of those kind of places. We've then got Composer um, and there's also Arrow Notes, which is the kind of uh, the notation that goes alongside. And then we go out and we deliver um, learning experiences for people as well. So with Composer, what we were looking to do is essentially kind of distill the power of a piano um, and the person that knows how to do it down into a device that you can play with one finger and you can easily just chuck in your backpack. We're kind of removing the necessity for, for you know, musical theory and all of the kind of dexterity, etc. And also to have something that you know you can you can just travel around with planes trains automobiles uh, you know and, and uh, i like to um i take these out when i play live as well i take a couple of composers in my setup because what i found is some of the kind of deeper um cc control that you've got in there is actually things you can do on here that is far easier to do with composer than, than other devices brilliant in, in the sense of this as a product like yeah. what we was this a, a problem that became like, I need to make something like this? Or was it just a, 
I need to find a better way to control a keyboard. What was the reason for making the composer? Right. So um, it was it was designed after recognizing a need. Um, I worked with uh, with people who had reduced mobility. Everything, even if it was accessible, was asking them to to develop a new movement and to mm. you know people that have already got barriers. Technology was putting up more barriers for them. But yeah, I recognized that some of the guys I was working with used electronic wheelchairs. Was like hang on a second if we kind of flip the technology they, they're using there then that actually um we're removing barriers because they've already got the muscle memory they've already kind of got the familiarity of the device so that was where the initial idea started then my business partner owen me and him have been friends for a, for a long time um he was working at native instruments um so he was he was there for 10 years um and he was their head of product learning so onboarding people the, the kind of first software that went with composer i built in reactor so i was chatting with owen quite a lot right. just trying to get the inside line on native instruments and going right look where can we you know where can we package this looking at maybe it'd be an nks thing it was like you know i've got i've got an early prototype it was like the problems that you're talking about are the same things for slightly different reasons but the same things that when i'm going in and putting a show together with radiohead or with the chemical brothers less so but still similarly over there he worked with so many of the big touring artists yeah. that there was such a barrier to entry that like there, was, there wasn't something that was super intuitive and, and easy to use so that was kind of where it started but then as the development's gone on and on you know yeah. we've just realized that actually by through through doing having that design mindset of like let's make sure the people at the edges are included here and they've got an equitable input to this actually you get the middle for free you know that's not my right. my and i can't take that but yeah. like by designing a user experience that works really well here actually design user experience that works for you know your modern beat maker who is on youtube programming beats you can go and you can have a look and go right i've got a 16 step sequence uh, i'll put my kick there my snare there and it's going to sound like this right. but then when somebody asks you to start inputting chords you've got to have piano skills or you've got to use a midi pack or you've got to use pre-prepared loops or you know and essentially there's barriers being put up for people all over the place so what we realized was actually by by kind of distilling the piano and the piano player into a handheld device. We're actually enabling a lot of people to get um, to sound musical far quicker and to have a more creative input and expressive kind of um, way of making music rather than dropping MIDI clips in, you know, or doing one finger chords on something that needs a software layer, you know, yeah. in between. So it doesn't work on your device and there's a tech barrier there, you know. So we kind of, yeah, start in the accessibility space, but then really what we've, what we've kind of uh, moved, well, it is accessibility really, but it's in a, not from a disability point of view from a you know musical instruments can be tricky and unless you've got the time to really dig in and learn them it's yeah. hard to get very musical out of the back end no, that's great thank you for that that's very interesting the choices made obviously for um the design obviously is very unique and obviously and yeah. what i really like as well is the fact that it can run um completely wirelessly uh mm. which is really really good so this is obviously i'm guessing bluetooth le battery wise what's the actual du duration time non-stop use uh we had them go in for just over eight hours last week wow. and they hadn't run out of battery but what you'll find is quite quickly the lights will go off so the lights on the pads will go off and then they go into essentially a sleep mode so you know we, you can pick one out, out the cupboard you know a week later and it's still got charge right. in it we want these to be there and helpful for people who aren't necessarily the most tech savvy or have got their yeah. you know charges set up you know we want people to chuck it in their bag when they get it out it still works um, that's fantastic the only other thing i was thinking was are you looking at any kind of um program that's a pc and mac base where you plug it in and you can actually program it up yeah yeah so it'll probably be yeah so we've got um there's an ios version of composer just started in development now which which is not for exactly what you're saying it's actually mm -hmm. to take an equitable experience of playing a joystick over to a touchscreen so right. that it's lower cost so people can kind of get into our, our way of playing but yeah. we do actually have an app at the minute um which is just for firmware updates but you can go on and you can tell the device what what you want it to do at right. the minute you can't tell every single button what to do and switch it around but that is exactly where we'll be heading it's still it's not completely finished yet but we've got the pro mapping cool. where, where that becomes really interesting you've got additional pages so pads one and two rather than them being cc's they become kind of navigation so you'll press right and it'll move to the next box which is a full bank of six midi cc toggles nice. then the next one is a bank of three plus and minus cc's on an exponential curve dependent how long you hold it right. so you can use that for reverb verb sends you can use it for yeah. filters whatever you know so if you hold it it'll fly up quite quick if you 
touch it slowly, it will kind of it will move up slow. Um, but then pages three and four um, are actually um, from MIDI C uh, from C1, chromatically moving up on a different MIDI channel to the joystick. So you can play right. drums with the buttons while playing keys with the with the joystick, or you could trigger loops with the buttons while playing something different or doing effects with the joystick. Nice. Uh, so it really opens it out. You know, you can do yeah. most of it. Using you something like that, uh, yeah, and then putting it. that next to it, and, and basically yeah. this has got things like track effects where you can do stutters and you can do all kinds. You can do sweeps and we yeah. go, Burr, and yeah, you yeah. do that with like more granular control with a joystick. Yes. That's a really, really cool idea. Is there anything that's going to be beyond Composer? We're going to bring one in that will come slightly below this, hopefully significantly below it in price, but okay. slightly below in terms of the, the amount of dynamic that you can get. And then there's ideation around one above as well, but that's a little way off yet. You know, we want to make sure that this works in the market first and that yeah. people are using it and are interested in it and, and sort of see the value because... One of the big things for, you, for us, and I think this is something that you alluded to earlier as well. Somebody give somebody a pad controller; they, you know, intuitively going to understand what they might need to do. Give somebody a keyboard; they're going to intuitively know what they need to do. Give somebody a joystick that looks like a U boat, um, you know, and there's there's a little bit there's a little bit of work that are needed, you know, to kind of onboard people and educate people. And I think that's really we're looking to do now is to kind of show people where where the value is because yeah. a few people have already said you know yeah but i could get a midi keyboard for this price so like of course you can but the market's flooded with midi keyboards so it's far easier to do that you know new technology is always unfortunately going to have a bit of a higher higher price but i think yeah, that we course. can value to people then, then then they can see that you know it's a it's a kind of worthy piece in their setup the key thing for me is commun ironically communication in the sense yeah. of not the controller itself but what these yeah. do the because it's kind of like oh colors what do they mean um so yeah. and of course you don't want to write anything on this because they're soft pads because you want them to change what they do it's worth, worth to note on that as well and this is something that we're looking at and actually with you being a predominantly a loop artist i'd be very interested in your input mm. at the minute the, the all of the pads are set to action on the up as opposed to action oh, oh. on down okay. it, the reason being it allows us to simply do a di you know have double taps yeah. and things like that on yeah. there so it just means when you're moving up and down you have got to be you've got Kind of get your finger Release. off it for that yeah, when the action yeah. comes. Yeah, yeah. Can these be CC'd? Can At the minute, it's just the top two. The pro mapping, then all yeah. of them will be able to be. All of them. The top two become navigation, so the bottom six can. Um, and you've yeah. got momentary CCs. So if I was, got, if got I was to connect this to something like Loopy Pro, um, and then it just does this amazing MIDI learn thing, so we could actually have right. like you know loop, next, stop, start. Uh, rewind fast forward and then we've got control with this as well. That's that's quite cool, but it's very interesting to know because you could almost preempt it and then when you release it's like a yeah. you put it down as a press as their right. command. Um so then you could also hold it down and then as you're doing something when you get to bar one beat one you go whoop like that and let go. So yeah but there is cool. a way around that though. Um if you can MIDI map if it's just on CCs I know in Ableton obviously you can map with note values. Yeah. So the th the third and fourth pages are both notes um and oh, they yeah, will all yeah, operate absolutely. on note like on down um you know because you've got note oh, on and note off on cool. those so you will still have 12 buttons that you're 12 pads that you're able to do that with if you need Amazing. to. The only last thing I would say is, and this is just me being really, really nitpicky. Please do, no, please do. Is, is the option of that way. Um, so basically, if I'm going up, down, left, right, going ah, sideways, okay. and then your buttons yeah. on the sides, so you're out of the way That's of the cool. buttons fully. As of course you yeah. could go that way, I suppose. But I'm, I'm yeah. just having that option. But then it's like, where do you put this? You know, from an up yeah. and down. So you'd have to read. Well, it's, it actually works okay. So, um, so we've got um, we, it's not there yet. So you've only got this mapping and this mapping. Yeah. But we will have. We basically want to do the four main compass points. Maybe. Um, and actually, I'm still going up and down octaves here, so it does. Well, that makes, that's nicely. why I said it because it makes more sense to go up uh, and down, like yeah, side and side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's on it. Yeah. He knows. So we're gonna it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. yeah, we want people. You know, I've I've always been a been a live performance nerd. You know, and tried to get whatever's in my backpack to do as much as possible and to really fit into my setup. So well, I'll tell you we what, it's give a lot easier than trying to carry this thing. And uh, so yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, yeah exactly. <sighs> 
So what do you think? This is a really unique way to control MIDI. Of course, it's really accessible for those who need it to be, and it means that you can actually play music, certainly if you have a problem with dexterity in your hands, but also it is a MIDI controller. So I could control things by just pushing one side. Maybe I can control it via a button. I could reprogram that to be this way around and upside down. And for me and Lupin, I could program the joystick up to do different things, record, turn on an effect, turn off an effect, hold that effect, and when you let go, it goes back to normal. As well as today's sponsor, there's a link in the description box if you want to go and pick one of these up. And I'd really like to thank Digit Music for introducing me to the composer because it's something really different, really special, and I can actually see it integrating in lots of people's musical lives. Let me know how you would use one of these in the comments section below. And if you're interested in MIDI controllers, have a look at this video next.